So let's do a three-way brainstorming of an encounter that we could actually, in 15 minutes or so, build out and, uh, you know, write it up. Throw it on Amazon. You can use our link and get to it. That part was a joke. That's a joke. So here's the way it's going to go. I'm going to throw out a very short hook. Yep. And then we are going to brainstorm, well... If that's the hook for the players, what's what's the what's really happening? What's the story behind that? And then brainstorm an encounter in a particular setting that would mm -hmm. go with that. And maybe we have to build a you know at least the outline of an NPC to go with that. And then we'll finish it up with you know how would how would that particular hook slash encounter be resolved? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I've got two. What would you like? Number one or number two? A or B? Number two. Number two. All right. <laughs> Here's the hook. A naked wizard just comes walking into town, completely stripped of everything, and says that he has just been waylaid out on the highway, the road coming into town, and lost a lot of magic items. Okay. All right, so... One, it's got nudity, so your players are automatically going to be interested here. Right. But then he lost a lot of magic items. Also right? interesting. So I think that's a hook players are going to take. 100%. Okay. So let's come up with the story behind that. What's really going on here? So in my head, the, my first thought was like there's some roving band of bandits that are like fencing wizards that are attending some kind of like big convention or a big symposium nearby and there's like a bunch traveling and there's like this large syndicate group that is fencing and and stealing from all of these wizards um but your party doesn't necessarily know that because they were in the small town but two towns over there's this big symposium and uh you kind of stumble upon this big crime organization that's just ra having a racket of the highways you know uh, i like it John, you got anything? What if he wasn't a wizard at all? <laughs> but he met a wizard out on the road and knew he couldn't take the wizard by himself. So he put the earworm in the player's ears. Hey. No, I'm the wizard. I'm the wizard. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Wow, or I was no clothing. really digging the syndicate thing, big but crime I like thing. That. You got into more trouble than you thought, but I'm going to go with John here. Like, So this guy's a total imposter. Mm -hmm. there's a wizard out there with a bunch of shit that he would like to have. And so he walks into town and says, I'm the wizard. I've, everything's been stolen. He probably gets so animated with his discussion of what happened that he's forgetting to cover up his junk as right. he's talking to him. No, I, I Rolling can that performance check. I can see. I like it. So we got a built-in NPC here. Yes. Right? This guy. He's probably roguish, criminal background... Maybe, kind of yeah. just a scurvy kind of dog, yeah. dude. I, I like it because you can make a really fun NPC out of that. And you get a sort of choice built in there, too. When they find the wizard wizard. How do they resolve it? How do they resolve it? Do they knock him out and take his stuff and share with the other dude? Here or? you go. Another job well done. Right. So we're kind of, we're kind of moving into the next thing. That's cool. So our hook was... Naked guy comes into town, says, I'm a wizard. Somebody just robbed me out on the highway, took all my shit, lots of magic items. Help me out. Yeah. The story behind it is this guy's a con man, and he's going to promise these folks, hey, go knock that guy out, bring my stuff back to me. I'm going to give you a large part of it. Right. And that guy gets the shit he wants, too. Yeah. So that's the backstory. So here's the encounter, right? So they go out in onto the road to find this wizard, what are they going to find? I would suggest no self-respecting wizard, no matter how high level he is, is traveling the open road without some beef around him. Probably. Glass you cannon know? and all. Right, right. So I think we got to give him some Couple minions. Points. Yeah. You know, um, caravan guard type things. Maybe, Maybe a familiar too. Oh, so I'd imagine that they kind of walk up on them. They've made camp for the night. And, you know, so 
he's not necessarily wearing all of this stuff, and he looks maybe kind of scrungy because he's been traveling all day. Scrungy. Scrungy. And it's him and a couple bodyguards. Maybe, maybe he's been three. traveling for days. Right. So he looks kind of like a... It's quite somebody. possible this guy just ripped off a right. wizard and put on his clothes. Right. Uh, he's got a couple flunkies who are dressed for the road that aren't necessarily, you know, dressed in, to the nines, but they kind of look like a rough crowd because it's been a rough travel. Those flunkies are probably not real high intelligence, mm -hmm. right? The only job they can get is his muscle, right? So they're not going to be able to, you know, uh, elaborately explain anything or carry on a ruse or whatever. So. And they'll probably be very surprised when somebody shows up and is like, you have to give back the things you stole now. Like, they'll be like, what? Right. They may even be looking at the real wizard guy and said, did you steal all this shit? <laughs> Which allows you into some persuasion roles where the party can use that against the true wizard of persuading his flunkies. No, he stole that shit. And they'll be like, maybe he fucking did. <laughs> yeah. So the the encounter with the actual wizard has got to be um, ambiguous enough that the party could attack the wizard and his guys because that's a bad guy. Let's add some justice to this world. Or ambiguous enough that they could go, holy shit. Wait. Maybe this guy's telling the truth, and then there becomes a non-combat way to deal of working, working through this. And uh, it I, might be one of those DM things where you see how your party reacts, and if they're like, well... We got to find out, is this a good wizard or a bad wizard? Because if it's a necromancer, we can just take his stuff and not feel bad because we're a good party or whatever. Yeah. That's what I loved about your suggestion that the naked guy coming in town really isn't the wizard, right? Because it added, I mean, if it was just straight up what I said it was, then it's, we'll go out there on the road we'll and have a battle thing. and yeah. bring some shit back. But you've just added a wrinkle in here that makes it now... How does the character, how do the players want, want to play this? And as a DM, you can let them roll either way and huh. well. and really work out something fun. And so now we got another potential long-term NPC that mm -hmm. could be added to your game, the, the, the wizard, wizard from the... Either an enemy or an ally, right. depending on how they play it. And no matter how they play it, the guy that walked in the town, the, the con man, could be a long-term NPC in your group, too, right? It could be one of those irritating <laughs> guys. Imagine them get him the stuff, and then, like, they're like, oh, we should go see our wizard friend. And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, totally. <laughs> I can help you with that. Funny thing, man, but I decided to make a career change. <laughs> no longer doing that. No, yeah. That would be hilarious. So let's say that it ends up in, in a fight, right? If you're DMing this, I would say three or four um, henchmen type guys and, and the wizard. And then depending on the the level of your party, you're going to, you know, scale up the wizard's level. So what kind of uh, spells does he have? And that could actually, mid-battle, you can have this go both ways, right? Mid-battle, they realize... This dude's throwing some pretty fucking high level magic right. in us. He must be the wizard, right? But I won't, but now you're already stuck in it, right? So you could you could scale the the number or level of mm -hmm. the henchman, and then scale up the level of the wizard and what kind of um, spells that you get. Yeah. In any case, you got to put some loot in there, Definitely. right? That represents the magic items that con man, naked con man. Greased up naked con man. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that he was after, right? Yeah. So that could be kind of fun. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, figuring out how much gold. I would like, you know, yeah. five gold pieces and some pockets around, you know, five here, three there, two there, whatever. Because this is not about gold, right? It's about some some magic items. Right. right? And there's got to be something a little more than some, you know, Normal every day. Oh, look, a bag of holding. Okay, yeah. yeah, everybody's got a bag of holding. So you have to throw something in there. And what what kind of ideas? So, yeah, and it's got to be good enough that it starts to like to put his thumb on the scales of the moral ambiguity. We take it for because ourselves? they may actually believe that no, this guy's actually the wizard, wizard, and the other guy's a con man. But this motherfucker got an orb of fucking sightseeing, and I want that thing. It's a plus three orb of sightseeing, by the way. All right, look that bitch up. <laughs> I think if you uh, want to tie this into your main campaign, if you have like a um, lost relic or a lost magic item that isn't necessarily well known, you can kind of have like a, you know, an orb under a, a velvet thing that 
glows and all that stuff. It doesn't have to have necessarily a purpose, but it's intriguing enough to lead them into a bigger storyline. What what does this thing do? Right. Why was Con Man so interested to get in and, it? Or was why was this wizard who we believe was the bad guy so interested in stealing it? Yeah, you could build build off yeah. of it. I like that. Um, but also you can look at your party and say, you know, well, so-and-so has been, you know, hankering for this. And what if they found a dagger of, of you know, I would two. throw a few things. I would throw a few. Right, because... Things. Well, because that's the way I set it up when I said I had a bunch of magic items. I guess you could. Well, that's tweak what makes that him a good target want, to the con man, but too hard to take on himself. Well, they're good. I think uh, if you want to throw a few magic items in there, I think one thing that's good for that is like single or limited use uh, magic items, like scrolls or yes. you know, uh, here's an amulet that you can use one time to be invisible. Or yeah. up to an hour or whatever, right? You can throw some of those. So they're, they're cool easy. and they're magic-y, but you don't have to worry about them breaking your game because right. you give them single-use kind of stuff. Um, and then I, I like the idea of one really, uh, Emily, the one you came yeah, up with. Yeah, almost not. One really big mysterious magic item. That, that maybe the wizard's trying to transport some boy and it realizes too much it's too dangerous. And he's like, y'all just take it. <laughs> right. And so the big guy, you know, the naked con man, he was going to be like, got a bunch of ma my magic items but only one of them really matters to me so you go get all these magic items back and you can keep all of them except the plus three uh orb of sightseeing right because i want to sightsee in my next <laughs> town over <laughs> so you know the way this would would uh wrap up in the last section i thought we needed to talk about was resolution but we've kind of talked about this right there's a couple different resolutions right they could get there and it becomes kind of non combaty and they come to the realization that this guy is an actual wizard and the con man was in yep. there, right? So uh, they, it, in that resolution, they've probably made a friend out of an NPC who's some level wizard and have at least some mild irritation from with, the, the with, the, with the con man. Maybe even the con man, while they were preoccupied with the wizard, has managed to make off with something of theirs. Ooh. <laughs> you devious bastard. But you. I love it. <laughs> it's it's the double con. <laughs> because you're giving them a good ally in the wizard and... Taking away something. Taking away something. Right, in some way, somehow, Back. naked con man <laughs> realized you were going to go with the wizard instead of with him and so he's like well i'm gonna like, go back to the inn and steal your shit snatches a wand and puts right. it in his and prison like pocket. any good con that man lies. make himself scared yep and then the other resolution is if if you actually decided to go into the battle right then you're gonna get you're gonna get all the goods or dead that's always a possibility you yeah. get all the goods come back and then I guess it's a question of do you make good on the deal with Naked Con Man? Give him the orb, keep all the other uh, little stuff, yeah. or does that uh, evolve into some other encounter, some other intrigue, some other way to go with your campaign? I like it. There's an opportunity, too, to flesh out the goon squad, whoever the guards are. If they are from a faction, then the non-combat route could have them giving jobs to it's true the party and the combat route could mean that they show up at random points throughout the campaign to try to yeah. get their revenge oh yeah definitely i like it i like it a lot it's great i like it a lot, I, like it a lot. lot. I think my favorite part is that it, it, a lot of times when i build encounters it's like well what are you going to fight and this one gives a chance for the people who have soft skills you know, like persuasion and, you know, insight. Given, insight and things like that to flex those muscles. Like those character, like charisma based characters who don't generally get a lot of play. This is one that can be really good for them to read into the motives of people around them and make like, this whole thing could go south real quick. Oh, yeah. If I mean, it could be a it could be a, a, a nothing burger. Right? Naked con man comes into town. I'm a wizard. And I just got it. And then one guy in your party always does this goes insight check. And it succeeds. She's like, yep. oh, the whole damn thing blew up. I think as a DM, you can say, uh, uh, you can tell he's got some ulterior motives in here, right? You know, yeah. you can give something that intrigues rather than dismisses the potential. You can tell hook. he's uncomfortable. It's probably because he's naked. There's something <laughs> under the surface. <laughs> <laughs> of the skin you can see everywhere because <laughs> that's the thing is you can play off those certain like you know inside things as well he's naked 
in the middle of town square. He's going to be a little off because I'd be off, you know? <laughs> or you can have him be either very well endowed or not very well endowed and have it with a disadvantage role because you're so distracted, distracted <laughs> by it. <laughs> I look to it like, okay, roll it with disadvantage because this dude is hung. Hung. <laughs> <laughs> and you have never seen a wizard with that kind of staff. <laughs> chances are, though. Chances are they're going to Chances go. are that a naked dude comes into town with this story. Occasionally, I think somebody's going to go inside check. But most of the time, most parties are going to be like, I'll Take my cloak, cover well, up. Yeah, here, let me help you out. Yeah, we're that way. We're going to go take, we're going to go get your stuff back right. for you. So here's my question to you as a DM. Uh -huh. Which way do you hope it goes? You know, um, do you hope that they fight the wizard? This is what I loved about brainstorming this with you guys, right? Um, first of all, when I came up with these hooks, I tried really hard not to think about yeah. the rest of it. You know, what's the real story? What would be the encounter? What would be the resolution? I tried really hard not to think about those things. Your mind goes there anyway. It's hard not to. You have some. So, uh, in my mind, I hadn't even thought about this guy was a charlatan. Yeah. So in my mind, it was, well, they're going to go out there and there's going to be a combat battle um, and they're going to come back with some stuff. It could be that simple. It's much, much better Oh yeah. now that you guys have put input into this thing. Uh, as a DM, I think I would like to, can I, can I do Chinese menu, some yeah. off of column A and some off of yes, column B? I think I would like it to start off combat and somewhere in the middle, the realization the happens. <laughs> and then it's like, how do you work through the, we were just fighting you guys, but now maybe we can be friends or okay, at least mutually that. respect and everything. Yeah. There, there's so many ways this thing can go now based on the stuff you guys have uh, put into it. I would, I, I want to play it. Now. I want to play it now. I think what's great about this, like, you know, brainstorming session is that it's very much how it happens on the table because your character, your players are going to think of whatever their brains, you know, they're going to be given thing and they're going to be like, well, what if it's a this and what if it's a that? And so we got to kind of work through all of that. And that was super cool. That was cool. So that was our very first encounter culture. And we're going to write that up yeah. just like we brainstormed it here and uh, put it out there. Put it out somewhere. Well, it's um, nowhere. And I think we're just going to make it free content. Just free shit. Just because it's fun. Grab we it. can put it on our Ko-Fi. Oh, we have a Ko-Fi. That's well, right. Do we? we I do. didn't put the link in the thing of Bob. Yeah, it's too soon for that. We're yeah. still we're still brewing the coffee. We're still brewing. We're still but brewing. yeah, let's do that, right? So we come up with these encounters. So it's going to be a one-page adventure with a hook, what the real story is, what kind of encounter you could put with it, and Maybe what kind of resolutions we have. And we'll put it out there for you to grab and enjoy and use in any of your stuff. So yeah. Encounter culture. You heard it here first. Yeah.